Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Oppo Find N3 Flip, the newest flip phone from Oppo. Now, if you have watched my past videos or if you follow me on social media, you will know that I'm actually not a flip phone guy. I do like foldables, but I prefer my foldables to be the big folds, the book-like foldables. And don't worry, Oppo is one of those coming very soon too. But this video will focus on the Find N3 Flip. So why do I not love flip phones? It's because I thought the past couple generations of flip phones, you know, from Oppo, Vivo, Huawei, Samsung, I just thought that the outside screen didn't let me do enough. So basically I had to flip open the phone every single time I want to do anything serious. Like if I want to send a WhatsApp message, write an email, read an email, I had to flip open the phone. And I'm a very heavy user. So I didn't like that I had to flip open the phone 150 times a day. The second complaint I had about flip phones was that I just thought the camera system of flip phones were not that great. Like obviously a flip phone camera is not going to match the best cameras on a slap foldable but it wasn't even like they were one level below they were like two levels below and it was, that was just too much compromise for me so the Oppo Find N3 Flip I'm happy to report addresses both of those issues to varying degrees so number one the outside cover screen 3.2 inch OLED panel can actually do quite a bit I can actually run full apps on it not every app but a lot of apps that most of us use day to day like gmail whatsapp telegram wechat google keep google maps they're actually all fully functional on the outside screen i can actually navigate on google maps without flipping open the phone i can read entire emails even send emails on gmail just with the outside screen however the keyboard that pops up on outside screen is a little bit cramped I find that if I do swipe typing, I actually can still send a text messages um, without much issues. But like I said, not every app supports the outside screen yet. So Instagram, for example, will not work on the outside screen. Oppo has a settings, just like on the Samsung flip phones, where you can jump into settings to select which apps you want to run on the outside screen. The second issue that Oppo addressed is the camera system here is much better than any other previous flip phone. So you notice that the camera module is a little bit larger and it houses three cameras covering the usual ultra wide, wide and telephoto focal length. So yes, this is the first flip phone with an actual telephoto zoom lens. Now the specs are pretty modest. It's a 32 megapixel 2x zoom lens, one over 2.7 inch image sensor f2.0 aperture. So, you know, it's not the largest image sensor around. It's not the fastest aperture, but it is still much better than not having a zoom lens and requiring completely digital zoom on the Galaxy Z Flip 5 or the previous Oppo flip phones. The main camera here is actually pretty good and competitive enough with slab flagship. It's a Sony IMX890, one over 1.5 inch image sensor with an f1.8 aperture. It's actually the same camera sensor used in the OnePlus 11. So you pair that with Oppo's pretty mature software image processing and the main camera is really, really good. It produces shots with really punchy light lively colors, like the Hasselblad vibe that a lot of people like. There's also a 48 megapixel ultra-wide camera that can capture a pretty sweeping field of view. So combined, you have a pretty capable camera system for a flip phone. So Oppo has addressed two of my biggest complaints with flip phones. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm still gonna wanna use the larger foldable because I just want more screen on my foldable. But I have to say, this is about as close to an all around flip phone as I've tested in the past. The rest of the hardware is awesome too. This hinge is really sturdy. It stays in place at any angle. And Oppo says it's tested the hinge for 400,000 folds. It's also rated IPX4, so minor splash resistance. So if it's a light rain, you don't have to worry. But if it's like heavy downpour, then yeah, maybe not. The main screen looks great. It's a 6.8 inch LTPO panel, 1080 by 2520 resolution. There's also an extra layer of polarizer film on the screen. So that means even if you use an ND filter or if you wear sunglasses, the screen will look normal and not have these really distorted colors. Oppo also managed to pack a 4,300 mAh battery in the phone, which is relatively large. And despite that, the phone is still pretty lightweight. It still weighs under 200 grams, 198 grams to be exact. I'm a big fan of the overall hardware. Oppo added extra curvature on the edges of the phone. So when it's folded and you hold the phone, the sides actually feel a little bit rounder. It's not like a complete blocky in-hand feel. So inside you have a MediaTek Dimensity 9200 SoC. It's a almost flagship level chip. If you look at benchmark numbers, they're pretty respectable. And obviously for day-to-day -day tasks like going on Instagram, sending emails, the phone can handle it with ease. I even played some graphically intensive games and it handled the game fine. It even survived a 20 minute extreme stress test on the 3D Mark 
benchmark app. That's a really stressful test that pushes the phone to its limits and it actually made it through 20 minutes without overheating. For software, you have Android 13 with Color OS on top. Now, I've been a fan of Color OS. I actually think it's very minimal. It doesn't really get in the way of core Android, but it's also very customizable, more customizable than the Pixel launcher, for example. I also love all the shortcut gestures of Oppo phones. Like if you swipe down with three fingers, you will grab a screenshot. If you swipe up with three fingers, you will go into split screen multitasking. You can also open apps in resizable floating windows, which really help with multitasking. The Find N3 Flip also has pretty good haptics and stereo speakers. At least by flip phone standards, they're definitely among the best that I've tested. So overall, the hardware is impeccable and the software, I am a fan of Color OS. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the pricing of the Oppo Find N3 Flip, but if we go by the pricing of the last Oppo Flip phone, we know that this will be under 1,000 US dollars. It's probably gonna be priced around the same as the Flip 5, and I think it's it's a very compelling alternative to the Flip 5. The Flip 5 has a better processor and more water resistance, but the Oppo Find 3 Flip has a better camera system, a larger battery, and faster charging too. So yeah, that's about it for this review of the Oppo Find 3 Flip. Like I said, I'm ultimately not a flip guy, so I'm gonna go back to using the big phone. But if you are a flip phone person, this is absolutely one of the best that you can get right now. So I will have a lot more content coming up, including the big phone that I was talking about and a couple of Huawei devices too. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest in mobile tech, please subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thanks for watching.